NASA is dropping SpaceX's Starship from the Artemis program. Maybe. Today, NASA Acting Administrator Sean Duffy announced on national TV that the agency is opening the contract for the first U.S. lunar landing since the 1970s to companies and proposals other than SpaceX's Starship. And as you can imagine, Elon is not happy about it. Let's walk back a bit to see how we got here. So in case you need a refresher, Artemis 3 is the third mission in NASA's new lunar program, Artemis, and is going to be the first one to carry humans back to the surface of the moon for the first time since Apollo 17 in December of 1972. In 2021, NASA awarded the contract for the lunar lander to SpaceX, which had proposed a variant of its Starship spacecraft as the main landing vehicle. But in recent months, and especially in the last year, Starship has been under criticism for the several failures of the early flights of the rocket's version 2 vehicles. Starship is not the only lunar lander that NASA has. In 2023, the agency selected a second lander, Blue Origin's Blue Moon, in order to carry out the lunar landing on the Artemis V mission set for no earlier than 2030 at the time. This was not to replace Starship because, well, it was for Artemis V and not three. Originally, NASA wanted two landers, but given the available budget for the program, NASA decided to just award the contract to the highest performing and least expensive proposal when it came to the lander for Artemis III. The idea of choosing two landers was that once they were out of the testing phase and flying operationally after the first few Artemis missions, they could choose to fly one or the other depending on the mission, just like what was intended with the commercial crew program, <coughs> Starliner. <coughs> if you're wondering what's up with the lander for Artemis IV, that one also went to Starship. So here we are, it's 2025, Starship has finally dealt with the issues of version two, but it's still suborbital. SpaceX has not been able to demonstrate the on-orbit refilling technology needed for the Starship human landing system, and the clock is ticking. China wants to land on the moon before 2030, and in the US, this and past administrations have been really consistent in saying that NASA has to land on the moon before them to keep US leadership in space. NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy pointed out that SpaceX is behind schedule with the human landing system, and therefore the agency is opening the contract again for a lunar lander that could do it faster. He referred to, quote, Blue Origin and maybe others, close quote, and having a competition to land back on the moon before the end of President Trump's term in January 2029. Now, the reason he mentioned Blue Origin is probably not because he thinks they'll be able to bring up the schedule for the company's Blue Moon Mark II lander from 2030 to something like 2028 or 2029. That lander is quite a complicated beast, which also needs its own series of propellant refillings in orbit like Starship. But Blue is developing a smaller uncrewed lander, the Blue Moon Mark I lander, that doesn't need all that, and it's even larger than the Apollo lunar module. This lander, since it's simpler, it's actually quite farther ahead than the Mark II lander, and is meant to provide Blue with a proven ground to fully develop that bigger one. In fact, the first one of these is already under production and testing, and Blue is hoping to launch it in early 2026, with a second planned for 2027. So in theory, you could just modify one of these Mark I landers to hold a crew and perhaps change a few things here and there, and you've got yourself a crewed lunar lander that can get to the moon quicker than SpaceX's Starship. Of course, there may be other proposals, but we don't know yet who else might have hardware advanced enough to also build a lander in such a short amount of time. This announcement by Sean Duffy led to a lot of reactions, especially from the man at the head of SpaceX himself, Elon Musk. He first said that Blue Origin has never delivered a useful payload to orbit, let alone to the moon. But to be fair, the same applies to Starship. In another post, he said that no other competitor would get to the moon faster than SpaceX and that they're moving like lightning compared to the rest of the space industry. His position seems to be that the US shouldn't care about whether China lands before us or not. In response to another user on X who said that the US needs to build the best base and stay there, Elon replied, quote, this is the based move. I don't know if he wanted to make a pun out of this, but just saying, Elon, puns are my thing. And here's another one. I, I could show you even more, but we'd be here forever. On the other hand, we've also heard now from Lockheed Martin saying they've already been doing their own work on a quote, safe solution to return humans to the moon as quickly as possible, close quote. So if Lockheed has already done that behind the scenes work, even before Duffy's announcement, Maybe other companies have done the same, so it's gonna be interesting to see what proposals come out of this. But what's gonna happen now? Frankly, we have no idea. This sudden announcement by Sean Duffy came out of the blue, 
not a pun, and there's no indication as to how long this competition will be open and when contracts might come out or even a timeline for that matter. Not to mention a lack of a budget too, because this would be something that would have to be paid for and well, let's just say government and budgeting is not something that's been coming along too well lately. So who do you think will get the US to the moon first? Starship, Blue's Lander, someone else? Let us know in the comments down below. It'll be interesting to see if this lights a fire for SpaceX to start picking up the pace even more. I'm Sawyer Rosenstein for Breaking Space, and thanks for watching.